Hello, everyone. Welcome to Otaku Talk. It's me, your boy, your host, OD. And today we'll be reviewing and analyzing chapter 230 of Dr. Stone. Honestly, super hyped for this chapter. I am super excited because this chapter actually answers so many questions that we, I feel like, as the fan base had, and I personally definitely had. Uh, if you're looking around and you're like, hey, this isn't your normal setup. Yeah, so I did a lot of moving yesterday. I moved to a new house. It's only temporary. I'll be moving again in probably two months or so. But yeah, this is going to be the new studio for the next you know, couple of months. Enjoy. I don't know what I'm going to do with that drop and all that stuff yet, but we'll figure it out. Really did the song. Yeah, kind of excited to record here and, you know, see what happens. If this is your first time on my channel or you've been here before but haven't done so already, do me a solid. I would appreciate it if you could like, share, and subscribe. Hook a homie up. Anyway, without much further ado, let's get into the room. All right. Chapter 230 of Dr. Stone, Humans. Like I said earlier, I am ecstatic about this chapter because so many questions got answered. And honestly, I'm a little bit annoyed because I've been moving around so much today. I've had to do this, that, and the other. And I haven't had a real chance to actually sit down and like really just digest this chapter and like really like, put, like just really take in everything that happened and really formulate what I wanted to, but I wanted to make sure to get this video out because I'm not gonna not cover it. Maybe I'll do a backup video or something like that, but as of right now, let me just take you through my initial thoughts, right? So the chapter starts off with awesome, awesome panel of this giant tree, and then you see this like sapling, right? And see the caption that essentially says, you know, all life, all life must inevitably face. So, way to start off morbid, Inagaki. Thank you so much for doing that. It's not like I'm already, you know, suffering from autism. So, that was nice of him. But, yeah. So, that's pretty much the premise of how the Medusas think and feel about everything. They assume that the core, the prime di directive of every species is to achieve eternal life. And if not, somehow survive. To propagate their um, existence, their species, right? And so we're learning more and more about you know, Medusa's ideologies, methodologies, and stuff like that. And we find out that they go around and they, you know, petrify all these different. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't know if there's any other like, or whatnot. I'm kind of assuming they make it kind of seem as though there are other life forms out there that they have discovered. This isn't first time this is just the first time they've come across this that have acted and behaved in but something that really made me bug out was the fact that you know they were appalled essentially by how long it took the population of humans to break out of their petrification right so the thing with senku is it took senku and we all know senku is smart as hell he is a genius Amongst the human population, he's definitely within the 0.1%, I would go as far as to say. That's just my personal opinion, but I think we can say he is in the 0.1% of intellects in, of, in humanity. And it took this man 3,700 years to escape the petrification. And something I want to mention on top of that is the fact that he was in a cave with bats, right? And so the bat guano or whatever also sped up that process. So it would have been even longer. Would have been even longer if it wasn't for the you know, the nitric acid that the bat guano provided. And so my idea is like, whoa, what kind of like speed have, are you guys or that you guys have visited that they have the mental capacity to escape the petrification in any time less than, you know, several centuries? Like, are we talking about a, cu a couple hundred years or, you know, some years, right? So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. So, anyway, 
everyone kind of feels that shock everyone's feeling a little bit you know indignant mad angry like are you kidding me but we go, we go on and learn more about the movie so let's start off with why did they decide to petrify everyone all over again so once again be, from the point of view of the medusas they're like why would anyone want anything other than to be you know petrified forever have eternal life you know discover these medusas and create them and once again i'm really really starting to feel more confident in my that some on um, that potentially you create these medusas and then you can like transfer your consciousness something along those lines because what would the point of creating medusas be unless it was to become the medusas themselves right what what, what do they mean create medusas so anyway thank you guys remember the the you know the arc treasure island where he uses the radio waves to send out a uh to execute the medusas remotely and petrify the people there right so because he used the radio waves to that the medusas on the moon apparently were able to intercept that transmission and hear it and understand okay humans are alive they know about us by now so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna re-petrify all of them and then that'll get them working on like the medusas once again still a little bit confused about the logic but they have a completely different logic than we do so i'm not going to get into that right now and because of this chapter i have faith that inagaki is going to explain the rest of this right so they do that to uh Senku and they decide you know to better ha to to have a better chance at this they're going to use the same method he used which is radio wave and they're going to use the same voice he did so i think basically in their opinion this was like a, their way of communicating with them but once again the, the fact that they were able to send messages like why 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 i have a question for the god why do you want to die makes me wonder why not just go that approach and talk to him, right but anyway i digress let's proceed so the next question we get answered and i was actually kind of thrilled about this because this was super cool was why the medusas were detonating inside you know um vacuum so something we find out this chapter is oxygen is poisonous to medusa whatever material they're made out of acts in a way similar to let's say iron iron is the best thing at the top of my head that i can because it rusts quite easy right so medusas go through a process that i can only assume is akin to oxi oxidation and basically oxidation is what is the result the cause of you know rust it's what rust is it's how rust happens right i'm not going to go any deeper into that even though as a bio major that's of chemistry classes and i should be able to explain what oxidation is electrons move all that but i'm not going to so anyway air is poisonous to them right and so as a thank you for saving them from this poisonous situation once again they set off the petrification again and this is the biggest and funniest example of miscommunication i have ever seen in my life with just how the medusas are going about this process right so the medusa decides that they're going to release another petrification instead of once again for the umpteenth time communicating with the we're just going to do really vague obscure actions and hope you kind of decipher it and so the medusa goes off again release the petrification petrifying everyone for the sole purpose of letting the human of their existence right even though know, one and i simply you know saying hey we're the medusas we exist would have satiated all right and so, so next stanku asks the question why the most well this isn't the most important question but this is the most infuriating question i had during this whole plan and explanation of events right if the whole goal of the Medusas was to have humanity, you know, create batteries for them and reproduce them and replicate them, stuff like that, why continually keep turning them into stone and shooting themselves in the foot? Because obviously they cannot work to these ends while being able to, um, what's the word? While being petrified. And so at first when I read this, I was very confused. <laughs> was very confused and i was like that is the biggest non-answer 
basically they explain what i said earlier in this room, that hey you know upon coming to your satellite which they're referring to the i've i've seen in sci-fi before a movie called satellite or satellite planets so that makes sense that they saw technology there they were like all right these creatures are you know capable of you know space travel they're capable of radio waves and stuff like that so they have to be uh significantly like they have to have significant intellect however they're like after all the time you guys spent petrified you didn't really meet our expectations and we kind of realized okay something is up here which is once again the reason why i think that there exists some form of other life in in space one that is also again vastly vastly uh more advanced than humans right and so the first time they said that, I was like, that doesn't really explain what you thought petrifying us would do and how it would contribute to you know, your replication, battery creation. And that's when Senku says, "For like, how do you guys vote? I'm, and, he, and he wants to learn more about them. He's like, I'm ready to learn. And that is another question that I asked. I was asking that before. They are able to float. What makes them do that? And so... This is going to sound like a dumb theory. Once again, I didn't have a lot of time to sit down and flesh this out. Honestly, I'm going to be totally real with you guys. I'm just kind of winging this. I am winging it. I'm looking at the chapter, trying to think about what I want to talk about. But he asked, like, how do you guys levitate? And my theory is that they thought that, you know, they assumed that a advanced civilization would have the means of carrying out work while petrified, right? Maybe it's some kind of, you know, um, Gene Gray. Uh, I was going to say Professor X, but he doesn't have telekinesis. Very common misconception. But maybe this is some kind of like Gene Gray uh, telekinesis kind of thing where with their brains alone, the, this advanced civilization um, found out how to manipulate matter and, well, um, you know, float, create things without the use of appendages, stuff like that. Maybe that's the case. Or maybe they thought that we had enough, you know, technology um, advancements in our science to be able to create Medusas in a short period of time with a limited number of resources, right? Um, maybe they thought that we would be able to continually depetrify ourselves and repetrify ourselves because it shouldn't be taking that long in the first place. But I don't, I don't like that last theory. Last theory really seems supposed to stay in your petrified state uh and then maybe possibly while you're in your petrified use your brain power uh your brain power or whatever in order to make them a which would make a lot of sense as to why they're constantly the radio frequency maybe at a certain you know at a certain uh you know evolution in one's they are a um you know how like you ever seen the whole movie limitless where we only use or where it was told we only use like 10 percent of our brain power excuse me sir yes but what would happen if for some reason we ignore somebody unlocked 100 percent of the cerebral capacity 100 percent yes it's got style that you have you know you know Maybe once you're able to use an increased amount of brain power, you, your speech develops new abilities that they can. There's a lot, a lot, a lot going on here. But anyway, Senku is literally thinking like I'm thinking. Look, man, I kind of get a little bit of it. Funny because the rest of them are like, I don't get any of this. But Senku's like, I get a little bit of this. But here's the thing. I want to learn. This, as a scientist, this is a scientist wet dream. Discovering a new ancient civilization, discovering new technology, discovering advancements in science. This is science he has never even heard of, that he could never, ever comprehend at this point, right? And so this is like a treasure trove at this point for Senku. And so he is like, I want to have a private conversation. And so everyone's immediately how do you plan on having a private conversation and i knew immediately like no once again medusas can block out 
uh, radio frequency. Whatever they're made of, lock them out. So, they immediately swarm Senku and drown him. And Senku proposes some form of killer plan. And he says, hey, lend me your bodies. And so, I am very curious what he means by that. And this is what frustrates me about not having enough time to really, like read this chapter and really like uh, analyze it and think about all the various things that like. But off the top of my head, from like quick read through, the only thing I can think about is uh, let me dissect you guys. Uh, let me uh, like let me enter enter you guys once again. I don't know why I am titled. I am titled. I really do not know why I am so fixated and stuck on this idea of you know, downloading consciousness. But like I am adamant that like that is like kind of what this is because nothing else really makes sense unless my other weird theory about eventually after a certain time you turn into it. I don't think that's what it is. And then there's that line earlier that uh, Jen said. That was basically along the lines of they act human. They have personalities. And that's something that makes me think that maybe they're not AI. They have they they seem to get upset. They seem to have tantrums. They have ways about them. They're not quite human. You know, that's something I think is just really native and uh you know specific to us, but at the same time, they're not just, you know, robots. And so Sanku is doing something that isn't faith. He is really, he is literally taking a leap for mankind right now in trying to discover the science behind the. And obviously, he doesn't want you know, the society of you know, humanity petrified, but I think he's going to try to come up with some form of compromise. Everyone involved happy. Anyway, I gotta go. A friend of mine wants to see. Uh, so I'm going to leave it here for now. But yeah, please let me know in the comments what you think is going on. Uh, let me know if you think these are definitely AI or if you think that my download has some merit to it. What do you think Senku meant when he said, um, when he said, lend me your bodies? Um, let me know if you think that, okay, now that we've learned a little bit more about them, now that we've about their plan, is it making a little bit more sense to you? A little bit more comprehensive right and yeah let me know what you think in general about like where the series is going if you're liking it honestly for me this chapter did it this chapter kind of the spark was never gone but it really really reinvigorated that spark like okay now we're getting somewhere now we're learning things now we're getting the thought process yeah um, the ideologies all that stuff of the anyway thank you guys for tuning in uh my frequent viewers it means world to me you have no clue i love talking to you I love theorizing with you. so thank you guys anyway this is talk with talk i'm your host o please make sure to like share and subscribe great week take care and